his writings about the past are something quite quite different. I find there is a lot of nonsense, and uh, uh, I think in a way he's a historian by himself. And uh, to deep interest in history, and uh, initially to teach his own daughter something about all history, and you know, letters from father to daughter, see, 1948, when he was only 10 years, see, somewhere in Missouri, right? and then glimpses of all history uh, when she was there in Switzerland, and he was in you know, locked up in jail so somewhere in UP and you know, see, where are etc. And he wrote these uh, about 200 letters and we became as glimpses uh, of all history. And uh, he wanted to educate his daughter, you know, see, and probably he wanted to usefully spend his time in the jail. You see. And then, uh, I mean, uh, when he was put behind bars himself, uh, he was put uh, behind bars once again somewhere in Maharashtra. In a matter of five or six months, he wrote, uh, you know, uh, this work, which has come as uh, the discovery of India. He really, I think, this time, you know, he wanted to teach himself for Indian history. See, he was a teacher by proxy to his daughter, but here he wanted to, you know, he was deeply involved in the freedom movement. He wanted to understand India and his people and uh, his culture, his heritage. Out of that, as you know, he wrote this in prison. See, with very limited see, collection of books. And, uh, and uh, I think uh, even now, I see this book displayed uh, commonly in the, in the general bookshop, which means that people are right, see, and, uh, I don't know how many historians you know, read this. In fact, uh, you know, just go back to the three volume biography of Nehru, he called it a, a woolly piece of writing. It is woolly, but you see, I mean, you know, sometimes wool uh, has a lot of importance, you know, particularly in four seasons. <laughs> and uh, and uh, in the times of anxiety, I think uh, it is this kind of uh, writings, you know, which, you know, you know, try to bring some sense, you know, to, to situations of tension. This is what, you know, Kalana said uh, when he wrote his Rajasthan, he said, you know, this is my you know, the narration of, you know, uh, the deeds of the kings of Kashmir, Raja Tarangani, you see, may serve as a stimulant in normal times, see, mm. uh, source of inspiration in normal times, but as uh, a sedative in abnormal times. So, sort of, uh, uh, I take it that there is some anxiety, so we are, we are in, in, sort of uh, in a period of, uh, I mean, the, uh, uh, in a period where there is tension, crisis, crisis of identity, and uh, so, can serve as a sedative, you see. And uh, so, uh, I think Nehru uh, 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 is one, and I find uh, uh, Professor Sales, uh, who happens to be the uh, Chancellor, his writings are equally important. And uh, uh, I'm sure the, I mean, the, uh, uh, quite a few of you are familiar with his writings. He has written a lot about economics and you know, civil economics. But, but uh, when I sort of chanced upon the, his writings. He has not done much, but whatever little he has written, there is a lot of sense. I, I find great appeal in, uh, in uh, these writings of Professor Sale. And, uh, you know, the first one, uh, he wrote in the New Republic somewhere in 1993, you know, India of the West. See? And then, in 1996, you know, he wrote another article actually, uh, this is a review of uh, the films of uh, Sajid Dhiri. See, the taking pride in a pluralistic uh, society. Again, printed in New Republic, reprinted in Spam for the year 1996. And then, uh, uh, and then in the same year, he was invited by the Asian Society in Kolkata and uh, he gave uh, a beautiful uh, lecture. I think uh, uh, Professor Amar will be in the lecture, if I remember. On interpreting India's past. He is written with them, see, as a small uh, sort of you know, pamphlet, see. And then uh, in 2001, he gave the inaugural picture of uh, Indian History Congress, which was held in Kalkata in uh, 2001, as I said, see. And then uh, in 2006, uh, I'm sure he had a copy of his book, uh, you know, I find it to. Uh, 
very very interesting and very very relevant to the present context. What is the title of this book? Uh, Identity and the Violence, the Illusion of the Destiny. Yeah, see, I mean, but I find this book very very fascinating and in a way he is trying to sort of give an answer to Huntington's hypothesis of clash of civilizations and he is trying to corner Huntington and saying that you know one's culture, one's religion alone you know cannot be markers of one's identity. One's identity can be multiple, can be pluralistic. One can one can have identity at various levels, sex identity, class identity, I mean <coughs> uh, identity as students, identity as teachers, and you know, various levels. And uh, I think uh, it is one of the rare attributes of uh, the humans, you know, to I mean to have identities at various levels. I mean they enjoy identity at this level, identity at another level but not necessarily clashing with the identities of other persons. So, theoretically, there need not be any clash between a group of persons professing a particular faith and another group of persons. And in a way, actually, this problem was what we have discussed today. It was already being faced by Ashoka and he already gave an answer but you know you see answer is, answers are always in forgotten they are related to background and problems is equal to it and uh, what was uh, uh, his precept in uh, one of the ethics you know please uh, respect other man's point of view other man's faith just as you would like him to respect you right see and so probably there was a problem there was a problem and he was advocating the solution. So, I think uh, the kind of problems which we face later on in our history and the kind of identity crisis which we face uh, even today, they are not very, very different from, from what Ashoka is. In a way, things get repeated but in a, in a different context. So, we, see, it is here I think uh, uh, I find the writings of uh, 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 both uh, Nehru and the Professor Amartya Sen very very interesting and very very relevant. You know, they may not tell you, you know, they tell you very little about the actual past. See, they, Nehru has said very clearly that his interest was not in the names of kings and the dates and you know, you see, he came to his tea, you see, but it's a very different purpose. You see, and, uh, he wanted to understand his own people, he wanted to understand his own country. See? And then you know, the title itself is I mean, so appropriate, the discovery of India. He wanted to discover his own country, his own land, his own people, and what they are, what they are not. And, uh, and in a, in a smaller way, I think uh, uh, in order to promote uh, his larger interests of, uh, I mean, uh, uh, arguing for various welfare schemes for the, for the people at large. Dr. Sen also wanted to understand the Indian people, what they are like, what is their heritage, so that he can formulate his academic programs in a more appropriate way. I think the purpose is the same. To understand the people, their, their is the mindsets and you know, I mean, you see their, their needs and so on. So forth. Now, you see, this is, I mean, uh, uh, Sort of, you know, I mean, uh, see, we'd like to, I mean, the, uh, I feel that, see, these uh, writings, and probably there are a few other, see, several other uh, writers, you see, along these lines, but to me, the writings of both uh, these, I mean, uh, uh, scholars uh, appear to be very, very relevant and very appealing. Okay, see, this much, you know, uh, this second step also. We agree for a while. We will disagree later on. See now. See what do we mean by socializing and humanizing the, our the understanding of the past? And uh, uh, I think uh, 
the 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 first look, see, uh, the first important thing to, that strikes me is uh, the dispute between the the positivist and leftist, you see, you know, group of scholars and those uh, who are brandless writers. And uh, uh, see, group of scholars say that, you know, see, I mean, heritage studies, particularly historical studies, you know, you know, deal with the empirical, you see, you know, work and you need hard facts and only then, you know, see, the very conception of history, you see, that uh, very poor woman concept, you know, see, see, just like the other doctor, etc., and causality is important, and, you know, and then others, you know, uh, say, you know, why, this is, but then there are certain other aspects also, they may not be, you know, they may not belong to the category of hard facts, but then, see, they are also, I mean, they also amount to facts. I, I particularly have in the, uh, mind, you know, the recent controversy that arose uh, uh, when the new chairman of ICTR was named, and Professor uh, Vice Sudar Shudao is the chair, new chairman of ICTR. And immediately there were corruptions, you know, uh, of the uh, of you know, I mean, the dissent and the Romila, I think, uh, she happens to be a friend of the friend. Uh, and she was even trying to, to, to express her uh, opinions. And she said, oh, you know, this, I mean, you see, it appears that ICH job is sort of, you know, I mean, uh, saying goodbye to, to, you know, see, one way of looking at our past and then they want to treat uh, real stories to drawn from the epics as as real history and uh, so kind of this is most recent you see. And uh, uh, okay, where do we stand? If we take you know the uh, writings of uh, some of the I mean non-academics, some of the non-specialists like the uh, professor uh, like the Pandit Nehru or Professor Amartya Sen, uh, what do they say? I mean uh, uh, I think uh, they also have I mean, uh, some good understanding of the Indian people and, uh, and uh, I mean, uh, uh, what do they say about uh, the role of uh, the importance of the non-facts? And I think uh, there are some uh, moving uh, uh, passages in the news discovery of India where it says that uh, I think we put the criticize extensively and uh, we understood that uh, people are uh, I mean, see, they have this sort of cultural background, and uh, I mean, uh, 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 probably we don't have much time to go into details, but uh, I mean, these, uh, you know, passages tell us that, you know, people have their own, in other words, to put it in a very short way, their own sense of the past. It is, uh, I mean, uh, what he called the great Indian tradition, but in fact, uh, he said uh, this is his biggest discovery. He said that this, you know, his discovery of the presence of the great Indian tradition among the common people of India, he said that he does not notice much of this in the middle classes, probably, <coughs> especially living in the, the towns and you know, say, the cities and, you know, see. and, the, and the, he said that this great Indian tradition is a mixture of you know, history, mixture of philosophy, mixture of myth, mixture of uh, you know, uh, see, religion and, uh, and uh, you know, I mean, you see, uh, uh, and uh, it is there in every Indian, because he has to criticize, you see, and, uh, and, uh, yes, you know, you see, these passes are beautiful, you know, and you would like to be back, uh, I'm sure, you see, many of you would have read that, so you will not, uh, I mean, repeat them here, and it says that, you know, I mean, you see, People are full of this understanding and they may not be a hard facts, but you see, it has made these people, it has allowed them to, what he says, come out of their rhetoric and ugliness of life. See, and it has, I mean, it has fed them some food for thought and for some food for action. See, the way of life is what, I mean, in a way, on Kumar Swami, much earlier said, you know, see, Indians, the uh, Indian sense of uh, understanding of philosophy is quite different from the Western sense in 
in the, in the West, the philosophy is more an academic exercise. Whereas in India, I mean, the philosophy is a part of life. Every Indian tends to philosophize. Not in, not in the sense of uh, Russian or you know, you see, I mean, uh, uh, other uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, philosophers. But see, uh, philosophizing attitude, you know, I mean, uh, allows people to understand the, the very meaning of life and uh, what are the avenues available to, to achieve this uh, philosophizing aspect. And this philosophizing aspect is, is a <coughs> manifestation of uh, the sense of the past. See, sense of the past is uh, a larger pool and the philosophizing aspect is, is one component of it. See, and, uh, and, and it has uh, allowed uh, Indian society great amount of stability of the Indian society passed through various kinds of stages, you know, sometimes a lot of conflict. But, but it is this general the so called presence of the so called great Indian tradition which has allowed the people to, to, to see, I mean, to, I mean, to maintain the equilibrium, see, in their minds. And, see, so it has made, and uh, is it true now? Is it? Is it true now? It was so in the past. Is it? Is it absent now? No, I think this is something to, which we need to investigate. And uh, as far as my limited knowledge goes, no historian in the country has made any any deep effort to go back to the people. And and now there is there is a greater need to do this kind of thing. Why? Why? You see. So, why? Because of the new ways of, you know, creating the identity crisis. Now, uh, initially, somewhere you see, uh, I said this controversy uh, that arose and the new chairman of ICH chapters and also, and then there were you know, statements and all, all these statements are about heritage, about the past the largest sense. See, there were statements, you know, like, uh, who was, uh, see, this uh, really, I mean, uh, uh, you know, uh, see, uh, one of these uh, uh, VHP leaders, I, let me make it very clear, I mean, I am a born Hindu, but you see, I am not a card carrying Hindu, and you see, I am only just a spiritual, see, and spirituality in the essence of all religions. So in a way I belong to all religions and I am sure most of you will agree with this. See, see, if spirituality is the essence of all religions, then we belong to all religions. See, see, yes. And uh, I do not belong to any particular political party. So see, my comments are purely, you see, one of, you see, I mean trying to understand what use we are making of our heritage understanding, whether it is going smoothly or there are some problems. Just out of this desire, we make some observations. And uh, you know, this gets me later, sometime very recently, just I think two months ago, maybe in October or November, there was some okay, said, you know, I mean, the, originally uh, in the world, uh, there were 720 crore windows. Everywhere there were Hindus, that was his estimate of Hindus. And naturally there will be some reaction. See, what did uh, Bobai see, this uh, you know, uh, Muslim leader, he has a political party, he is head of a political party. He said, I mean, uh, for a few days he said, every person born in India is a Muslim. Yeah. Some of you have read this. Yeah. Every person born in India is actually a Muslim. But then, uh, you know, his or her parents will convert them into other religions. See? Mm -hmm. See? They sort of tit for tat. No? About what? Tit for tat about what? About economic development, about welfare schemes, about health improvement. It's about religious. About religious identity. <laughs> and then, uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, I think uh, she's there, she's still in ministry, I think. And uh, this uh, Sarvi Janajan Jyoti, right? In one of our election speeches, speeches in uh, Delhi, 
She said, the, you know, India is uh, a land where, which is meant for the progeny of Ram. Uh, Ram, Jadu, Ram, Jadu, yeah, you see the, the word, she is spoken in Ram, Ram, yeah, whatever. Progeny of Ram, not, uh, not illegitimate children. See, Haram, Haram, Jadu, Haram, Jadu. Very good. I don't know who she had in mind the target, but she had somebody in mind, you know, she, whoever it is. So I, I would not, not ask him, you see. Uh, anyway, but then you see, there has to be some reaction. We did for that. Uh, not exactly, in this case, not exactly fit for that, but then uh, I think this happened in the Bihar himself with the uh, Honorable uh, Chief Minister. And uh, after he, he became or he was made chief minister. Jandam uh, Majiji uh, visited, I think, one of the Hindu temples somewhere in uh, some, some part of uh, yeah, you see, uh, uh, Bihar. And uh, this did allow him to visit. And he came back. And very quietly, it appears, you know, they got the whole temple washed. Mm -hmm. Right? They got the old, old temple box and uh, that came in the service and of course uh, our honorable uh, chief minister uh, saw this and uh, he was sort of back on to him. See, in my own state and, uh, and, and the biggest person of the state and all of them. So, not only he was uh, you know, I mean, uh, overcome with anguish but he gave a statement and uh, the original in the inhabitants of India were the, you know, were, see, uh, were the ancestors of the present day Don Garden and Yemi is correct. See, Yemi is correct. No, but this all, this is again about it. Like this, I think the one can go number of see, I mean, the statements, you know, uh, which have come in the recent past, I say there also, but they have come, you know, Increasing frequency in the recent past, whatever may be the reason, I don't know, it's for you to look into that, you know. See, and probably, uh, you know, I mean, the, uh, the number will, uh, will diminish, hopefully, because I think the Honorable Prime Minister came very recently to escape the day before, you know. Then, uh, okay, see, now this is, but I think in the minds, you know, this, this identity crisis is still there. Outwardly, you cannot suffer. There is. You see, minds are still not uh, pollution free, still not poison free. You see, and uh, I mean, there is. Uh, and uh, uh, it is in this context, I think, uh, we who are junior or senior students of heritage, the widest sense, including national heritage, I think uh, we can play some some role. Uh, I think I have another. Uh, I think uh, there are two, two ways in which we can help. Apart, I don't say that we should do this, uh, leave aside our uh, substantive work, whether we are doing philosophy or, I mean, the history or environmental studies. But, see, that's our main job. See, we are paid for it. But, but I think uh, at least some, uh, you see, regular, you know, research projects, see, I mean, regular projects whereby we can go to the people at large and uh, and uh, try to understand, you know, their sense of the past. And initially, we agreed that there is uh, a deep sense of the past, sense of the heritage of the Indian people. But what it is, uh, what it is not, how it has been used, how in a positive way, in a negative way, and whatever, see, all, I think uh, these, uh, you know, issues of uh, what's, where's, you know, and when's, why's, and how's of uh, people's perception of the past, see, this is a huge topic. Can we think of some, some, uh, sociologically oriented uh, field projects thereby we go to the see I mean society at large society at large there are so many grades you know, see starting from I mean the uh, 
uh, you know, I mean, landless laborers who are working in the so small farmers, big farmers, medium farmers, and, and various classes of people, you see, educated women, you see, not educated, and uh, even school children, you see, I mean, in the morning, uh, Aditya was, uh, uh, see, with us, we, I went to see the Nalanda, old Nalanda University ruins, and uh, dozens of school children, see, and, uh, I mean, see, they have been told by the teachers about it, some ancient site, monuments, and, you know, which remains and very appealing and so they and like this you know I mean uh, 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 a lot of things happen and uh, uh, and, uh, and can we go to the school children can we go to the college students can we go to the employed persons in the towns cities and uh, can we go to the I mean the uh, category of uh, art or scientists and say what is there is classes of the Indian society and what is uh, their understanding of the past? What, where, why, when, how, what do they understand the past? And uh, I mean, how uh, oh, they, oh, they got it, see, and uh, what are the methods, particularly the, the rural, you see, masses, you know, see, right from the Historical period, you know, we have regard. See, Kalana mentions in Rajatharangani that, see, I mean, one of the ways of educating the queens is to make them to go to the temples where, you see, epic stories are being narrated so that they are exposed. It's a kind of Now we have policy in Muslim, but at that time there was nothing. So, these have, these have, and these are still there in the rural areas. This is how even the non literate groups, you know, have acquired some sense of the past. This is how it's very important. Although they may remain till their demise, you know, non literate. See, in the sense of lacking the reader the right literacy, but, but their minds have been made to literate. See, this is, I think, very, very important. See, this is where. You know, uh, I think we must pay our tribute, you know, to the to the founders of our constitution, whether it's Ambedkar or Jansi, that we have to start we the people of India, you see. And the people of India in general are compassionate, they are very intelligent, they can they can decide things when see the I mean when finally see the issue comes before them and they can do this way. And uh, if necessary they can do this way also. There are cases. And in fact, your own chancellor has pointed out this in a very beautiful way. And, uh, uh, and so, maybe here and there, some studies, see, my understanding is very limited, but some understanding, some sociological understanding of the sense of the past. But even if some few studies have been done here and there, maybe independence movement, I think some studies have been done by the historians, but not about all other sense of the past. I think uh, uh, particularly, you know, younger people as part of even MA dissertations, part of regular research, faculty projects, see, I think this is, and uh, heritage in general, I mean not merely history, but heritage in the widest sense, including their understanding of the environment, what we have environment in school, see, so this can be, see, what exactly they understand of the environment, see, and uh, how do they want to see, see how, what is their understanding of the past and etc. So I think this is huge and I think uh, uh, you know this is uh, one uh, big gap uh, in the, our heritage studies and uh, most of us, the academics uh, in charge of heritage studies, whether it is history, archaeology, uh, religion, we have been, uh, we have been uh, purely academic. See, sometimes we say, you know, some debate is going on, but it is only of academic interest. So, we are academic in that sense, see, but, but, but not, see, taking the, the uh, this is also, I think, uh, you know, in a way relevant, that is not a big issue, criterion. After all, whatever heritage studies we do, there, there are very few people who do heritage studies with their own studies. Almost all of these, you know, studies in the uh, 
Olympic uh, these are done with public money, whether it is your university or my university or the university. All of us use public money. So, and even from that point of view, but I don't think, I mean, uh, that criterion, you see, that axis uh, great importance. See, justification in terms of use of public money. And, but, see, when the society is struggling with anxieties and anxieties, and uh, many of these anxieties are built around perception good, not so good, bad, sometimes very bad, very negative perceptions and conflicting perceptions of the past. I mean, the, don't we think that we can play some, some positive role to lessen the tensions? And what Karana was telling you, you see that, I mean, times of crisis, you know, understanding the past can be a kind of sedative. Can, can, can we, can we be some agents, uh, see, supplying sedatives for grappling with this, uh, these conflicting situations? And, I uh, do. Other writers have come. I think uh, somewhere Ravina Tagore has said, you know, let us not convert, you know, our understanding of the past into the Karta of Good. Right? So, the Karta of Good. Okay, you know, this. And uh, this uh, famous German uh, philosopher and historian mm -hmm. in his own way, Friedrich Nietzsche, uh, I mean, the Nietzsche position. So, on the UJ, sir, the deserted place of history. Yeah, you see, it's a beautiful essay, you know. He was talking about who? The German society. He is struggling with historical illness. You see, I mean, invoking, invoking things from the past beyond limits, and then he suffers from problems. I think that kind of context, you know, I mean, is revisiting. See, we have, and in fact, as you see, we told ourselves, Ashoka was already seized with this. See, he has put it in his own way. This is one. See, I mean, what number of, you know, field-based sociological investigations of men for understanding the common man's perceptions of the past. That's a very big topic, see, you can see that. And then the second thing, you know, I'm broadening the scope of our liberal education, wherever heritage is a component field. And uh, we do, I mean, uh, uh, you know, teach at some levels, you know, even science students, you know, something about this field. But you see, these are again, you know, things taken from the academic things and you know, things and, you know, diversities and, you know, wars and all. But see, we are fighting the simple fact that it is the, the actual messages coming from the past which have entered the minds of the common people. And, See, I mean, uh, I always quote this, I come from the Deccan area, two non-reputed farmers, when they meet, uh, uh, you know, each other in the morning, the first time, we say good morning, uh, good morning, as uh, I think they must have been doing in Germany, you know, you see. And what do they, how do they greet each other? They say, I say Ram Ram, and other person says Ram Now, the point is, are they debating about historicity of Ram in any way? Not at all. <coughs> to them, you see, Rahul is no longer a star, even if they existed, they would, they are, you see, that, see, this concept has become an icon with them. Ram stands for some, some good attributes of human beings. And they are telling each other, oh, let us, you see, I will try to follow your attributes. Nothing more than that. See. But then we historians, you know, quarrel about this. I mean, this quarrel with the Ravulaji and then I see church and is exactly the same. See how, oh, like this, uh, you know, common man's, you know, understanding of the past has ultimately boiled down into a number of beautiful new concepts. Even the, even the most integrated, non integrated you see, villager will use, uh, let us say, a concept like the Dharma. Hmm? It has become, you see. Dharma has become an icon. And in a small way, in a big way, it governs them. And they use concepts like you don't cross natural data. And all experiments, Nasiwara has taken it to him in the US Congress, you see. 
and uh, since it is applicable even in international relations. So, the point is that it is these concepts you see, which actually crystallize Kamala's understanding of the past and it is, as Nipu said, it is guiding their regular activities. But can we understand this in a, in a better way? Can we, you know, when we talk about liberal education and including heritage, this not merely facts and things and you know, rulers and their assets, but, but these, actually, these concepts. Look, I mean, school children, lots of them were there at Nalanda uh, Ecological Society. But do we tell them what is the main message of visiting this site? What is, what is it they say? Oh, you structures, is that, is that do anything? But what is it? Can our our teachers equip to tell them what is the, the, the main idea behind this thing? I think see, it is here that revamping of the use of heritage in liberal education rules and ultimately it is these just as common man has understood the essence of the past is in the concepts and we can you see make use of these concepts as the main component of the use of heritage in the liberal education. As yet, I think I mean dozens of these concepts, see, I mean because Dharma class and taken from various sources, Hindu sources, Buddhist sources, Jain sources, and Christian sources, all, see, right from, uh, even though, you see, I mean, uh, uh, the, you know, the, you see, the, I mean, the beautiful, you know, ways in which, you know, the hunter-gatherer societies look at the nature and other societies, see, there is something which we, and, uh, like this, I think a, a whole, a whole board of concepts, you see, can be drawn from the past. And if we, you know, see, transmit the, you know, I mean, these concepts and tell, see, our people right from the school level, see, how these concepts, what were their context of origin, in what context they were used, and how they can still be used to us, see. And, uh, I mean, we, we see, we, Let's say one of the cardinal principles of Buddhism for limiting your needs. Not to your wants, but limiting them. And in fact, I find this is the only solution to the problem of consumption or consumption in the whole world. See, humanity has been there as a palliative articles. I can say that humanity has been there for the last 2.5 million years. If the humanity has to be there for another 2.5 million years, I think the rate at which we are using the, the natural resources has to come down. Otherwise, you know, somewhere we go, after let us say, if you like, yes, you may be using There will be nothing to use. A simple concept, see, Buddha's concept, limit your wants. Basically, like this, you know, see, if I amount to moralizing, philosophizing, but, but I think, what is the main message? What is it? Why we should look at our heritage? Then let us let not bother. Let us not spend any resources, as we can as well say goodbye. But, but I don't think any one of us would, would like to do that. You see. And uh, and uh, particularly in a context like India, where you see, I mean uh, these uh, crises visit and revisit, and and I'm sure, in spite of all uh, all our efforts, they will continue. To but then we have to think of some solutions which you know appeal to the minds of the people. See, where do problems arise? Problems in human society, where do they arise? You see, I mean tsunamis can occur, earthquakes can occur, and you know, see again, fine, you see. I mean, see, we have to face. We have no answers, we have to face them. But but then you see, I mean uh, many times we create problems. And many times the point is then point of my you know, observations is, you know, it is out of our faulty or false understanding of the heritage we create problems, knowingly or unknowingly. And can we, can we make amends? And I think that is, see, and it is here, you know, I think uh, we can, uh, we can certainly make some attempts and uh, make our own contributions 
that will be the fitness of the things. And this will pay real tribute to the innate goodness, innate uh, intelligence, innate cleverness, and uh, you know, I mean, the uh, innate wisdom of people in general, the Indian people in particular. This is precisely what your Chancellor, oh, I'll close, just give you one minute. Your Chancellor said uh, uh, you know, in the tunnel, uh, I think that was the time when uh, the uh, second uh, UPA see, elections were announced in uh, 2009 and there was uh, a huge debate among the, the you know, TV see, persons and journalists, you know, newspaper journalists uh, in the Royal Society of Art, if I remember well. And oh, yeah, I say, get the elections and you see, I mean, Indian people are not educated and you know, I mean, you see, uh, see, I mean, whether there will be stability in the country and whether one particular, of course, Congress I think one, but it's different. You see, so, it was all just very fluid and they were all habitual, you see, I mean, uh, sort of, uh, uh, sort of, kind of uh, tension uh, uh, which is there in, in the book, you know, see India, see we uh, end up in chaos, maybe, maybe uh, no one uh, party will, uh, you know, see, I mean, uh, uh, will uh, get the majority and sort of, I mean, instability and all that. And uh, it appears, uh, Professor uh, what they say, was in the audience and some of us, we have nothing to say. So he said, yeah, do this. He said, you know, you don't have to bother much. See, just be quiet. You don't, you don't get too dense. See, and uh, in India, we have what I call the, the civilization of the continuity. And uh, by that, he was meaning all that we have been talking about. And you don't have to bother. Indian people are quite intelligent. See, if there was a man, they can understand the situations and they will do the good. And the elections were indeed not only announced, they were already announced, they were indeed held. And for good or bad, one party came to power, it, it was in power for five years. There was political instability. There was a lot of corruption, that is different, but, but there was no instability of the kind which we see in many other countries in the world. And uh, Professor Sainz's uh, comment, I think it speaks a lot. And that comment could have come from the mouth of a person, not an ordinary person. We had a very wishy-washy understanding of India's history and culture and heritage, but from a very a person, both of a person who had a very deep understanding of the Indian psyche, the Indian mind. And a person who had a very good understanding of the past of the country and its people. I think this is what I would like to see. And then look, combined as part of liberal education, this is, see, just give you more direct, I'm sorry. Uh, actually, I want to spend some time on mm -hmm. that. And uh, you know, Nehru becomes relevant once again. In fact, I have sent these pages. I have, I happen to have, uh, uh, happen to write you know, a few lines in this topic. I sent a copy to Modi because when he was in uh, Japan, he said, "Oh, you know, I see. I mean, the science, technology, and uh, you know."